Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at one of the premium tanks that you can get with the Evolution Season Pass and in particular this video is about the T41 E1 Bulldog which is a tier 8 American premium light tank and it is in the World War 2 game mode. So this tank brings back a player requested feature in terms of the 10 shot auto loading gun package. I'm not so fond of them bringing it back in a platform where you have to actually buy something to get this gun package. They could have just put it back to the Tech Tree M41 Walker Bulldog, but hey, hell, I guess that's a business decision. And yeah, we'll just focus on the stats and how this tank plays in today's video. So I'll be giving you a full rundown of the T41 E1, and I'm going to be comparing it to the M41B Brazilian Bulldog and the M41 Walker Bulldog Tech Tree variant to see how this thing holds up. I'll show you my commander and equipment setup and then we'll get stuck into some gameplay. I have three gameplays for you today. So we're gonna scroll on down here and see how you get this tank where you have to purchase the ultimate season pass, which is 6,000 gold in the store. I think that's a fairly reasonable price. Uh, you get quite a lot with it, you get the 25, uh, stage um, skip you get the t41 e1 bulldog and the skin which is called the killer b skin for the t41 e1 and you get a 3d commander sarah sagel i believe that's how you pronounce it um, and you also get the rest of the season pass where you can grind uh, through to level 100 to get the magak 5 which is the cold war premium tank so i think it's a fairly reasonable price for the actual season pass i'm just not too fond of them bringing back the gun package just for this tank to put it in the season pass but um, i'm still happy to have it back in the game so we're going to scroll on down here and look at the artwork for the t41 e1 bulldog this is it here with the killer b skin as it's called nice little b there on the side but i think it looks quite understated it looks quite sleek it's quite a nice skin and it fits in with the kind of world war ii uh, theme <laughs> vibe going on apart from all the hot wheels and wwe tanks that are running around there but yeah we'll just ignore that so for these statistics, we're going to head over here to the spreadsheet, and I'm going to be comparing it to the T4 to the uh, M41B Brazilian Bulldog to the, and the M41 Walker Bulldog. And uh, the M41B Brazilian Bulldog is the Tier 8 Premium, and the M41 Walker Bulldog is the Tier 8 Tech Tree Tank, which used to have the 10 shot auto loading gun package. Now the 10 shot auto loading gun package they've brought back is slightly different than before but it is still very powerful and I've been having a lot of fun in the T41 E1. So we're going to have a look at this, how this thing compares to these two tanks. I'm going to show you my commander and equipment setup and then I have three gameplays for you to show off how this tank plays. So as it's a premium tank it does earn some bonuses. It has 10% XP bonus and a 50% silver bonus. It has 5% less than the M41B Brazilian Bulldog in terms of its XP bonus, but 10% more in terms of its silver earning potential. And you have some pretty good games in this tank. It's more powerful than the M41B Brazilian Bulldog, in my opinion, so you should be having better games and making a ton more silver. And yeah, it's a very enjoyable tank. But now we're going to get stuck straight into the raw stats of these vehicles then. So in terms of hit points, all three of these vehicles have the same, which is 1,000. 100 hit points and in terms of view range they will have the same view range which is a very healthy 410 meters meaning you can push that to a very good level i've got mine to 525 with my setup and uh, it is very helpful especially in tier 10 games where you get some extra spotting assistance and you get the extra xp for spotting and dealing damage to tier 10 tanks so these things covered in yellow here in this excel spreadsheet are the updated stats with my commander and equipment setup should you choose to run it like i have and we'll talk through that a little bit later on. But now we're going to move on to the mobility of these tanks. You'll see here that the engine power is joint best in class with the T41 E1. It's joint best with the M41 Walker Bulldog at 800 horsepower, leaving the M41B Brazilian Bulldog in the dust. It also has the best power to weight ratio in this comparison at 35.08, with the M41 Walker Bulldog slightly behind and yeah, a lot better than the M41B Brazilian Bulldog. It has 70 kilometers an hour top speed, which is not quite as good as the M41B Brazilian Bulldog, but uh, it does struggle to get up to that 72 kilometers an hour very quickly. So 70 kilometers an hour on the T41 isn't too bad. And it is too better than the M41 Walker Bulldog, the Tech Tree tank. 
And it also goes 25 kilometers an hour in reverse, which is very, very nice. Best in class in this comparison by uh, one kilometer an hour. And that can be very handy for getting out of trouble on ridge lines. In terms of its traverse speed, you can see here that the whole traverse at 54 degrees a second is covered in red. It's two degrees a second worse than the Brazilian Bulldog and the M41 Walker Bulldog, but it isn't too bad and you can improve that with the traction system piece of mobility equipment, should you wish. And the turret traverse is 50 degrees a second, which is the same as the other two in this comparison. And those traverse speeds are very healthy. This thing is very nimble. It's just a shame that it's such a sort of fat, chunky, light tank. And now we're going to get on to the guns that these tanks have. So the T41E1 Bulldog has a 76mm 10 shot autoloader with a 2 second intraclip reload. And the M41 Walker Bulldog has a single fire 76mm gun, whereas the Brazilian Bulldog has a 90mm gun that fires a different uh, array of ammunition. So this 76mm on the T41E1 fires APDS as standard which has very nice shell velocity. It fires heat as its premium option and HE as its third ammunition choice. The alpha damage on the standard and premium is 170 alpha damage and on the HE is 260. The pen on the standard APDS rounds is 175 which is joint best in this comparison and on the heat rounds it's 210 millimeters which isn't too bad but it can struggle a little bit when you are firing at sort of heavy tanks and super heavy tanks it tears 8, 9 and 10 and it's 38 millimeters of penetration on those HE rounds which can be largely useless unless you know you're going to be going after an extremely lightly armored tank and maybe just keep one clip of HE damage for the end of the battle for artillery or something like that. So in terms of its shell velocity then, it has 1,219 meters a second on its standard APDS, which is very nice for firing at mid to long ranges. You don't have to give an awful lot of lead and it isn't too bad in terms of its heat and its HE shell velocity at 975 meters a second. The gun stats for this 76 10 shot autoloader is exactly the same as the M41 Walker Bulldog's gun stats for its single fire 76mm gun. It is the same gun, it's just um, an autoloader instead of a single fire gun. Whereas the M41B Brazilian Bulldog has this 90mm gun that fires HE as standard, heat as its premium, and it has a regular HE as well as its third ammunition choice. It has slow shell velocity on all of the rounds. It has terrible pen, apart from best in class pen on the premium rounds at 250mm of heat penetration. Um, but that kind of negates the fact of this being a premium tank and if you end up firing mainly heat you're going to be losing money in the world war ii game mode however it does have that little bit extra alpha damage at 320 should you fire the he and penetrate and 240 on its heat rounds should you penetrate the heat rounds um but of course that is a higher caliber gun at 90 millimeter and yeah you have to fire the heat rounds which cost more and uh, you can end up losing a lot of silver in the m41b brazilian bulldog um, it's a unique tank if you're in the right matchup but it does struggle i find especially at tier 10 to even make sort of silver because you have to fire so many heat rounds in terms of the gun handling then on these tanks the T41E1 has a 1.8 second aim time, which is not quite as good as the 1.7 seconds on the M41 Walker Bulldog, but it's better than the M41B Brazilian Bulldog. It has joint worst, cla worst in class accuracy at 0.36, but you can get that down to a very reasonable level with the commander and equipment skills that are available to us now since 6.0. Uh, the M41 Walker Bulldog has best in class at 0.34. In terms of its DPM, it's 2,186, which is worse in this comparison, but it is a 10-shot autoloader, so that's to be expected. This is still a relatively decent DPM for a Tier 8 light tank, and it's a very good ambush tank with this 10-shot autoloading clip that is capable of dealing 1,700 damage. In terms of the other DPMs, then, on this comparison for the other two tanks, the M41 Walker Bulldog has about 200 more at 2,318.8 DPM, and the M41B Brazilian Bulldog has a DPM of 2,284 should you penetrate all of your heat rounds, and it jumps up to 3,046.4 if you are managing to penetrate those standard HE rounds that have 102 millimeters of penetration, which you can do if you are lucky in a good matchup, like a tier eight matchup, and you're firing at a lot of tier sort of six to eight tanks. 
Um, in terms of the reload then on this T41E1 10 shot autoloader, it's a base reload of 28.5 seconds. You carry a very healthy 70 rounds of ammunition, which is the best in this comparison. You have 10 degrees of gun depression, the same as the other two tanks, and 20 degrees of gun elevation, which is very nice indeed. So pretty good stuff for the T41E1 board. It's a very powerful tank indeed. So what equipment do I run on this tank? Well, I run advanced concealment advanced optics and gun stabilizer and on my commander I run sixth sense born leader rapid loading steady aim rapid aim snapshot camouflage expertise muffled shot and situational awareness in terms of the equipment I have also played some games swapping out the gun stabilizer for traction system so I'm able to improve my top speed a little bit more and my handling with my um, hole and my turret traverse um, however I found that I just wanted the extra accuracy on the move because I don't run run and gun in the commander which is something that you might want to run um, instead of muffled shot but I've gone kind of for a half gun handling half dpm sort of and a little bit of concealment as well just to boost everything up a little bit more I find situational awareness does give you a fantastic view range it pushes it to a very healthy limit meaning that it kind of negates your really really bad camouflage for a light tank um, I say really bad it's not too bad but you are a very large light tank and you're definitely not as sneaky as something like an ELC even 90 or something like that at tier 8 but I believe this does have the same concealment as the HWK um, 90 which is the German premium tier 8 light tank so um, it's not a bad concealment rating for the size of this light tank but yeah you are a very big light tank you're very maneuverable but you're not too hard to hit when you are spotted um, but yeah try out my uh, setup and you can also tweak it if you wish I like playing this um, a concealment uh, to view range sort of ratio that I've got going on with my setup because it means that I'm able to outspot things sort of from tier 6 to 8 and even into in a tier sort of 9 or tier 10 game I find that I'm able to get some pretty good assistance with that fantastic view range so what have my stats gone up to with this setup well in terms of my view range it shot up to 525 meters which is very healthy indeed for a tier 8 light tank my still concealment rate now is 272 meters which isn't great but I find now that it is manageable and it is workable with this setup. My aim time has gone down to 1.66 seconds which is very nice. My accuracy is now 0.23 which is an absolute fantastic improvement on 0.36 which is the base value. My DPM has gone up to 2451 which means that my reload for the 10 shot magazine is 23.62 but that's it for the discussion on this tank compared to the Brazilian Bulldog and the M41 Walker Bulldog. We're going to get stuck now into the first of the three gameplays. So you're joining me here on Red Shy in the T41E1 and this is the first gameplay of today's video and in this particular gameplay I am running um, traction system instead of the gun stabilizer. I wanted to keep the advanced concealment because I still want the extra camo boost that that gives, gives me because you are a big fat chunky um, bulldog and yeah you're a big fat American light tank so I want to make sure that I've got as much concealment as possible so I'm able to outspot um, like tiers 6 to sort of tiers 8 very easily and even some of the tier 9 and 10 tanks that you're going to come across. So in this particular gameplay we're going to be playing uh, very aggressively, we're going to be using our mobility to get forward at the start of the battle trying to spot tanks coming from the south, all of these heavy tanks and medium tanks that are crossing the south trying to get to sort of the F9, F0 area where all of the brawling likes to happen over on the eastern flank. And we're just going to be doing figure of eights in this field. You're seeing that um, it, the concealment's actually pretty good, even though it's not fantastic for a light tank. It's only when that light tank crests the ridge that we get spotted. So we were sat out in the open and we had side shots into tanks that are on the nine and zero line. And when we get uh, re-stealthed, I think I stop in a minute to try and get some side shots into those tanks. I think, yeah, I stopped now trying to get some side shots into the CS44 and a few of the other uh, tanks on that side of the map. You'll see here that I get spotted when that T150 appears and he's on 700 hit 
uh, hit points. I've got 1700 in my clips. Even if I bounce some shells, I should be able to finish him off. And I'm just going to go for it. I've got to be careful of tanks firing behind me. I'm just trying to move as much as possible whilst also getting the damage in. So I am auto in and I probably should have aimed a few of these shots. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm bouncing because we are auto aiming right into either sort of his turret or his tracks and it's just getting absorbed but we eventually take him out with our clip and that's why it's so nice to have this massive 1700 damage clip and then we're going to use our mobility to try and get out of the way. So at the start of this battle we've picked up 700 hit points all on that T150 and we've got a nice bit of juicy assistance, 879 assistance and now we're just trying to get out of the way and get restyled to then go back in. We have lost over half our health, so we have to be um, a little bit careful for the rest of the battle, but I'm just trying to push this tank as far as it can uh, go. I always like when I get a new sort of premium tank or a new tech tree tank to have a few games being quite aggressive, playing a few different gameplays or game styles, I should say, to see how well this tank performs. And then I sort of set it into a more uh, slightly more passive and measured kind of gameplay approach. But I think it's good for these kind of reviews to give people an indication of how far you can go with this tank because uh, people do like to play light tanks very aggressively indeed. Um, way too aggressively in my opinion because most of them die within the first couple of minutes so you've just got to find the right balance between using your mobility using your spotting power of which this tank has fantastic spotting power even in a tier 10 battle with the setup that i'm using anyway because the 410 meters base view range is very nice and then once you've found that balance then you should be good to go and have good gains in your tanks you see here that I'm using the mobility to just to glide around on these ridge lines, duck back down in case I get spotted and snapshotted by anything. You'll notice that when I do actually aim and I stop and aim, the bloom on the gun is quite large because I've taken off the gun stabilizer, but it's just a decision that I've uh, I've made. You might want to take off um, take off something and add like the traction system permanently, or you might want to take off the concealment because you think it's not necessary on a tank like this, and you might want to. Um, run the gun stabiliser, you might want one run, run and gun and I highly recommend if you're going to be playing the Bulldog very actively going around and you don't want the extra concealment to run run and gun on your commander um, and then you can uh, take off something like the muffled shot because if you're playing this kind of gameplay you're going to get spotted and you're going to sort of need the extra accuracy on the move in a tank like this when you're circling people and things like that but this is just my preference and of course you can tweak it however you want so we spotted that iron rain in the corner there and we were just trying to get out of way, wiggling, uh, going left and right, trying to make it um, hard for him to guess where we were going. And I was hoping our artillery would like delete him in a one shot. We know he's in the corner. Um, we managed to get out with uh, still 472 hit points intact and our damage totals are now 1,251 assistance and 1,231 direct damage so we know that iron rain's in the corner there we're going to have to go in later if our team don't spot him out and we're going to have to try and avoid his uh three shot auto loader it's going to be very hard to sort of do because he's a very sneaky tank destroyer he'll be able to outspot especially if he's stationary and using foliage um even with this fantastic view range that we have and uh the concealment that i've boosted it's going to be no match um, for the iron rain so we're going to have to try and use our ability to avoid his shells it's not always that easy in a tank this size in a bulldog um, but you can always try and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be um, taking calculated risks to go in maybe when the game's already won um, to get that little bit of extra damage a little bit of extra assistance so we went in there to help that su 100 unfortunately we crashed into each other i hope that my crash didn't get him killed and make him miss a shot i think the barrasque would have finished him off anyway but i felt kind of bad about that so if for any chance you're watching i'm sorry about that um we nearly got taken out as well but fortunately for us we still got 98 hit points left we've got a little bit extra assistance and damage and now on 98 hit points we are a one shot for everything on the map so we do have to be careful but I want to try and get as much out of this game as possible and I feel like we're in a pretty commanding situation in this game. Uh, we were up by three, we're only up by two now and what I'm about to do now is yeah, slightly too aggressive. I'm going to go in trying to spot um, the Iron Rain again I believe in a second. I'm going to try and avoid his first shell because he has a fairly long intricate reload and I'm going to try and get around him. Uh, his traverse speed isn't fantastic with his whole turret so I should be able to run rings around him but we are a very long very chunky tank so I have to be careful. 
I'm going to stop to get a couple shots to finish off this Baraskin because that's a very dangerous tank at the end of the game with his nasty two tap autoloader. And now we're going to boost our view range with the um, rations that we are using. And we're going to go in to try and spot him out and use the momentum down this hill to help our traverse speed should we have to take evasive action. Trying to use this house as cover, then swing out to spot him. We do manage to spot the Iron Rain at a good um, position, um, but unfortunately for us, I kind of gave myself too little room there um, to manoeuvre and try and avoid the Iron Rain shells. It's yeah, completely my fault there. I was way too aggressive. I felt like we had this game in the bag, but it turns out to be a lot closer than I thought. Um, but spoiler alert, we still do get a victory and uh, it ends well for us. We do get a little bit of extra assistance on that Iron Rain, but that's uh, the kind of gameplay you can expect if you do improve your mobility that little bit more. You can be very mobile indeed and you can have a very good impact in the game. So I'm going to skip forward to the end and we'll see how well we did. So our team do eventually take that one down for me, but it was a lot closer uh, than I was hoping. We pick up two kills, we get... 2.2k uh, direct damage, 2.9k assistance, finished second on our team with 1,399 experience uh, and 106,804 silver profit which is very very nice indeed for a tier 8 light tank um, and that's the T41 E1 playing a more mobile gameplay so that's it for the first gameplay we're going to get stuck in now to the second one. Righty ho then, we are on Fisherman's Bay in the second gameplay of today's video. This is the T41E1 using Advanced Concealment, Advanced Optics and Gun Stabilizer. So we have a little bit less um, top speed in this replay than we did in the first uh, gameplay, but we do have uh, better accuracy on the move and better accuracy in general. So on Fisherman's Bay, I'm going to come to the E line at the start of the battle, to the ridge line, try and get some spots into anything that's trying to head into the town from the north in from their spawn and we're also going to try and uh, get any shots in on that ridge line to any light tanks or anything that pops up we're going to use our mobility to sort of do figure of eights along this sort of ridge line try not to crash into uh, tanks too often although i can't promise anything with my driving skills and then later on in the battle hopefully when we have made an impact with our view range we can go in with our auto loader and try and take out some tanks so you've seen here that the shell velocity when i was firing that t92 although it is uh, pretty good at over to uh, 1200 um, shell velocity uh, when you're playing things like cold war which i was for the whole of yesterday when i was um, getting the gameplay in this tank and the mcguck 5 which is the other season pass um, tank that you get to le it level 100 um, I was so used to shell velocity that is greater than sort of 1400 going up to sort of 1600 and some tanks in Cold War that I was missing shells because I wasn't given enough lead so it's just something that if you play both modes you have to be aware of um, but once you get used to it the 1200 in World War 2 is absolutely fine and it's a pretty good shell velocity and now you're seeing the 10 degrees of gun depression at work we're rocking backwards and forwards with this extra um, gun handed that we have with the gun stabilizer we are able to absolutely decimate that t54 e2 with our auto loader and we can hopefully finish him off if he comes out behind this building and this is how good this auto loader is it's so fun to delete people in a light tank and then we're gonna pop our food back on for the active boost with the reload and then we're gonna get unspotted and see if we can find another target and that's how you're going to want to play this tank you want to find tanks that you can ambush that you can take out in one clip or that you can shoot without getting shot uh, back at because you are most likely uh, going to be a uh, hit if people are <laughs> firing at you and you're spotted because you are so big but you saw there that it wasn't until um, one of the enemy tanks came close enough to spot us that we were spotted we actually had that kb2 locked down and we were quite close to him and he wasn't able to spot us with his terrible view range and our very good view range and the concealment that we've boosted up with this setup so that's why i like to have just the extra little bit of concealment it can save you in certain circumstances and it just fits my gameplay that little bit better but for the instances of this gameplay we're already up to 1738 direct damage and we got a little bit of 35 assistance um, this is a very good damage dealing light tank so you're, you're not always going to be doing a ton of assistance or you don't have to you can still have a very good impact with your damage 
although with that fantastic view range you want to make use of that as much as possible especially when you want to try and get that experience and uh, yeah earn that extra bit of silver in tier 9 and tier 10 games you saw there how devastating that clip can be as well even if you aren't able to completely finish off a tank you can put them onto a one shot which can be really satisfying in a tank like this and um, make sure if you're going to be moving for a while throughout the battle or you're going to be relocating and you're not going to be firing within like the next sort of five to ten seconds then always reload to have a full magazine for when you get there um, it can be very annoying if you get to a target and you haven't got enough damage to finish them off but luckily for us we managed to reload fully we put two into the barracuda take him out it's still a relatively close game i had to relocate to sort of this side of the ridge line or this side of the e line to more towards the north because the enemies have one down the um, one line and they're going to come up from the south into our spawn so I'm going to try and do kind of like a full loop and see if we can spot anything out of this field get them cleared out and then we can circle back and try and defend our base we're going to try and take out this Churchill 7 here we didn't get fired then we used the foliage there to fire through so we retained our concealment factor he gets taken out by RS3 and then we're going to move on and we're already up to 2.6k damage and it didn't feel like I was doing an awful lot in this gameplay um, or in this tank in particular in this gameplay I should say for the kind of capacity that this tank has I felt like I had a pretty poor game but it turned out I was doing a little bit more than I thought I was um, and we'll see where it leads in the rest of the gameplay so there's an ISU 152k I believe or it might just be the tech 3 version but either way uh, I do not want to get shot by that tank if he's firing HG uh, he penetrates we'll get finished off and if he's not then we're going to be down to a one shot unfortunately my bad driving skills there as i was focused on that hellcat 105 mean i crash into a building and we do lose um just uh, over 400 of our hit points um, but we do manage to get a little bit of extra damage in there we're down by two tanks and i'm just trying to find the next target to help out as quick as possible i'm just waiting until i'm reloaded trying to wait until um, I'm reloaded until I go in trying to move away so I wasn't spotted then and then I'm going to try and uh, get some shots into this vanguard. I probably should have just gone straight in over there to try and help out but we managed to get one shot in the move there on him. One that narrowly missed that vanguard there and it's going to be an absolute pain to take him out. Uh, we're just trying to avoid his shells as well and it looks like we're getting targeted from the one line. Um, so now we're going to probably reload in a minute and then relocate and see if we can find someone else and at this point of the game when you're down on tanks and you're trying to get back in the game it's all about trying to sort of keep the enemies guessing where you're coming from you don't want to be isolated and uh, uh, grouped upon you want to isolate the enemy is what I should have said uh, you don't want to be uh, have multiple enemies coming in at you at one time like I do now I've made the misplay of coming back this way um, unfortunately for us it, it was very hard to win this game from this position anyway uh, we managed to get a little bit of extra damage in on this uh, lichen at the end of the battle but there wasn't any way I was getting out of that the lichen would be able to keep up with us and the rest of the game it wouldn't have gone very well but we tried our best at the end you want to try and isolate tanks like that um, at the end of the game one-on-one -on -one, and you don't want them all to come at you all at once and that's how you get out of that situation but unfortunately for us that was a defeat but it was a decent defeat we get a mastery badge with a thousand xp this is obviously first day uh, we make a decent profit of just under 140,000 silver we got four marks but that was that bug that was going around hopefully that is fixed soon but 4.2k direct damage 955 assistance and three kills is a pretty decent gain in a tier 8 light tank so that's it for the second one we're gonna get into the third and final gameplay and see what we can do in that one as well so we're here on Pearl River in the third and final gameplay of today's video and in this gameplay we are again using the advanced concealment, advanced optics and the gun stabilizer for the extra concealment and the extra gun handling and on Pearl River from this spawn we're going to head along the south and then I'm going to try and spot out the western flank at the start of the battle and see if we can catch anyone in this field or catch anyone that likes to sort of sit in the D, E, 1 and 2 area where a lot of tank destroyers and medium tanks like to snipe at the start of the battle. Got to be a little bit careful in this position because I've noticed it's being targeted a little bit by artillery, especially when you start spotted at the start of the game, you're going to be the sort of feature of everyone's attention. But we noticed this AMD here trying to get out of uh, <laughs> trying to get out of harm's way, and we are um, 
we're not the best concealed light tank, but we are a lot heavier than that wheelie. And uh, yeah, we ram him to death, dealing 610 damage, and we only lose a few hundred ourselves. So I feel like that was a worthwhile trade to get some of the mobility and uh, a light tank out of the game early door. So we're already up by one tank, and then we can now try and get um, some damage in on the tanks that are in the town. But we're going to re stealth, I'm going to hide as close to this. Uh, rock or this mound as possible so artillery has a harder shot with his shell arc and then when I'm uh, really stealthed I'm going to pop out see if I get spotted in that bush and see if they blind fire and I don't and when we're reloaded we'll see if we can look for any shots on that Ragnarok I did fire at him earlier but it looks like I penetrated someone else behind him or in front of him uh, but I'm going to take that all day long we're already up to 966 damage and 111 assistance and yeah it's only been a couple minutes in so that's a good start for this battle now we're going to come down here, we're spotting out the whole entire um, sort of one and two line here. Um, it's crazy how much sort of the concealment boost can help when you are fighting tanks of sort of same or lower tier. Um, I'm guessing this Carnarvon has an awful commander or no commander at all because it's only when I fired that I got spotted there. Um, but we're getting tons um, of spots here quite a bit of assistance and we managed to pop out and take out that Carnarvon that's a tier 8 heavy tank out of this game um, we're going to reload try and move backwards and forwards to avoid artillery fire and then we're going to move forward into the little dip here into the ridge line and hopefully my team will support me like they have been at the start of this battle if anything decides to come in and uh, try and fight me there's an HWK12 there Hawk12 and we're just going to try and act like we're going up, act like we're loaded. So when you're reloading, if someone doesn't know you're reloaded, um, they're going to be hesitant to come in, especially if they know you are a 10 shot autoloader, like um, a lot of the players will in this game when this tank has been around for a while. Um, but if we're reloading and we feel like they're going to come after us, I want to act like I'm loaded. I don't want to sort of back away and cower because they're going to come in anyway and go after me. And I'm going to act like I'm loaded so that I have time to reload. And when I'm reloaded, um, I can go up and I can fight back. So that's a good little tip to do in this autoloader or any autoloader really. Always act like you're loaded so that you can try and intimidate the enemy into coming after you and all in on you because that's what a, you know, a good player should do and that's what you should do against other autoloaders. Um, I guess other tanks I should say that have autoloaders. If you know that they're dry then just go in because they can't fight back. Um, obviously only if you are able to don't throw your tank away for it but uh, that's something to bear in mind so now we're just pushing the view range out some more you can see the view range working really well for us and the concealment factor that we have boosted with this setup we spot the artillery and there's a chance that he could have turned around for us but i don't think that his traverse is that good to turn around in time and as we are in auto loader we managed to get one kill on the artillery we come up behind this Tiger 217, get a kill on him as well, and it's all about flanking and ambushing tanks in this 10-shot Bulldog. Um, unfortunately, we do bump into our teammate there, uh, but we're just going to go in now on this M43EA. The, the game's nearly already gone, so I want to try and get as much out of it as possible. We get another kill there on the M43EA, and then we're going to go in on this KB85, but he gets taken out by our friendly T41E1. Go immediately for the reload, because I know I'm going to be driving for a while. And hopefully when I get there, I should be reloaded. And hopefully we're going to find another target that we can ambush. I think I know there's a Ragnarok still in the middle who can kill me in two shots, but almost uh, always kill me in two shots. But he has three shots that can kill me anyway. Um, medium gets spotted to my left, so I'm going to swing to my right until I'm fully loaded. Just check this pathway here. And then we're going to see if we can get an angle on these medium tanks to get some extra damage in at the start of the battle and keep the view range up on them getting that extra assistance at the end of this battle so i don't want to just go up take a shot from all of them and get killed for one shot of damage i'm going to wait for there's a moment so i can go in and get a couple of um extra shots in or maybe a whole magazine who knows but i'm just going to be acting like i'm loaded rocking backwards and forwards keeping this type 59 lit hopefully if i didn't get any more direct damage i'll get some assistance we're going to be cheeky occasionally with a couple of shots um, the fantastic reverse speed of this tank means that if you pop up on push runs like this, they can try and snapshot you and miss their shells. But he's bored of us now on this ridge line. He wants to get one last shot in in the game. And whilst he is turned, we're going to go in for um, the rest of our damage. 
and we auto aim loads of shots into the back of his tank and that finishes that game off very nicely and I seem to remember us getting a lot of kills in that game so hopefully we got a top gun and we did we finished MVP in that game with six kills 3.5k direct damage that's a mastery badge a sniper medal and a high caliber 802 assistance uh, yeah six kills 766 assistance and a nice profit of 121,000 silver and this is a very powerful light tank a very fun light tank it's great to have the auto loader back on the bulldog and yeah i highly recommend getting this tank in the season pass because i think it's a very good deal so thank you all so much for your support and thank you for watching this video and until next time i will see you on the battlefield and bye for now